Since I've already tackled discussing all the lone players for FC Barcelona, now it's time for everybody's favorite midseason update, and that is those names you need to watch in La Masia. As I've been warning for the last few updates and the emergence of the likes of Gabi and Balde in the first team, coupled with the fact that Barca Athletic, the B team that usually has 22 to 24 year olds, that's largely made up of U19 players at the moment. So it seems that the new threshold for first team promotion has opened up quite a bit from when I started doing this a few years ago. Don't believe what you hear, the pathway to the first team is pretty wide open at the moment. But as our old friend Frances Tomas used to always say, if you do get one or two from every generation, well, that's actually a pretty good return when it comes to academies at this top level. And that's why this latest group has really put me in a difficult spot. I usually try to just focus on the U19 players, like players around 18, 19, 20 years old. But including our headliner in Lamine Yamal, some of these players are way younger than that and really breaking my normal standards. At 15 and 16, it's almost impossible to predict where these kids are going to be in even three years' time let alone when and where they're going to be making some first team appearances or getting even a moment at that point when they're 18 or 19. But due to Xavi's training sessions and the invites he's had, well, now I have to completely rip up my normal expectations for when we're going to see these kids around the first team bubble because they're already there. And that's not me saying that, that's Xavi. But I will add the normal disclaimer. When talking about 15 to 18 year olds, of which every selection on today's list is, anything can happen. They aren't the next Messi. They aren't the next fill in an amazing player that is a legend at Barcelona or elsewhere. They are still just a kid who may even choose to play somewhere else before becoming a professional. Look at Xavi Simmons. He made the World Cup with the Netherlands after a position change and a move to PSV. That's after starting his career with these insane expectations. Then a big money move to PSG still as a teenager. Then a career move to the Netherlands that has worked out really well for him. And he's still just 19 years old, but he's in an entirely different spot than he was even four years ago. And again, that's a player where things are currently working out for him quite well. And hopefully all the names that I do mention today, if not at Barcelona, do work out and become future, maybe not even stars, but first team players somewhere, anywhere in the footballing universe. All right, so I know you do want me to start talking about Lamine Yamal, but before we get to him, I do want to check in with Barca Athletic and some of the players that reasonably, again, due to their proximity to the first team, we should be seeing a bit quicker than all these huge big risers that I'm going to bring up in a little bit at the lower levels who have the brighter futures but still may not make an impact this season or maybe even next season with the first team. And the Barca Athletic teams aren't as exciting because... Due to the lack of depth in the first team, you likely already know these names due to preseason or even getting appearance so far this year. You likely already know the names, so I'll re-emphasize five of them and remind you that they're all still 18 or 19 too. Left-footed center back Chadi Riyad should get a Copa del Rey appearance against Intercity, and we could see Marc Casado at least in the squad too. Ilyasha Komash has been a regular starter for the second team, but the end product still hasn't been there this season. But again, he's still just 18 and he does so many of the other important winger things really well. The other winger, Estanas Pedrola, could get a Copa look too, and midfielder Alex Garrido, who unfortunately is injured at the moment, is still a really intriguing prospect at 18. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's worry about the lower levels. And when I say lower levels, I usually mean, let's talk about the 19-year-olds or the 18-year-olds playing for the U19s or the Juvenal A, or the 16-year-olds playing for Cadet A, as in the U16s. But this list, and why I'm bringing these kids up in particular, is because they're the youngsters that this club is pushing and challenging to play with age groups much older than themselves because they're already at that level. And that conversation doesn't end, but certainly begins with Lamine Yamal. I've mentioned him before, and I've tried to temper expectations, but now that's become impossible because of where he's playing and the looks he's getting in Xavi's training sessions. He is Barca's shiniest academy gem at the moment, and due to being 15, there are some things that were kind of unreasonable to expect from him, such as even being a part of Barca Athletic this year. At 15 and still being on a youth contract, it'd be reasonable for him to just be breaking into the cadet A level, the U16s, and be ahead of schedule. Instead, he scored a brace in his league debut for Juvenal A, the U19s, where he has four goals and four assists. In September, he became the youngest Barca player to ever play in for Youth League, following that up by being the youngest Spain U19 player in October. But things have really gone off the rails this week, as Xavi has called him up to train with the first team several times in the last two weeks. And of course, some of this is people going a bit crazy, and some of it may be true. And we'll have to wait and see what's fact and what's fiction from that latest news. Since he'll be 16 in the summer, it would make sense with reports that say the club officially wants to renew him with that professional contract when he turns 16. And with that signature, he could be doing preseason with the first team. Even more surprisingly, and we'll see in the next week how real this is, he could be an unexpected selection in the squad list next Wednesday in the Copa del Rey against Inner City. 
If he does play in that game, by the way, he would become the youngest player to debut for Barca's first team since Vicente Martinez did it in 1941. Martinez was 16 at the time, plus 9 months and 7 days. Yamal is 15 years old and 5 months. That's absolutely absurd. But if you get a good look at him, it's not that absurd. What has my hope so high for him at Barca, and maybe not other places even, is what his current best qualities are. We can't expect a 15-year-old to have this elite speed, athleticism, strength, or physical tools, and those may come. But what he already does at a high level includes all the things I look for in the next Barca first-teamer. His dribbling is a high level against kids at the U19 level, and his acceleration can get him where he wants to go. But if he does jump up sooner than we think, it's his first touch, his positional sense, body shape when receiving the ball, close control, and technique in small spaces that make me believe in his potential. He's very much an inside forward at the moment, relying quite a bit on his strong left foot as an inverted winger. And due to that level he's playing at, he regularly finds a way inside. The big question, of course, will be what happens when he finally meets the grown men that may be able to stop him from coming inside. But with his vision and unpredictability brought on by really good technique, he should be able to keep those defenders guessing too. At least at youth level, he also has a bit of an eye for goal, which is usually the case with players with the highest potential. But his entire skill set is what I'm most excited about, and think is quite applicable to higher levels. It seems like there are always midfielders and forwards in any academy with a ton of potential, because forwards put up the numbers that you like to see, and at that young level, those midfielders that have that differential and talent are the ones that stand out. For outside backs, it's a bit more difficult to figure it all out. Most outside backs don't get noticed until later because if you're really good at dribbling, then you're going to be put on the wing. If they have more quality on the ball and read the game well, well, then they'll be in the midfield. If they've got some strength for their age, and again, they read the game really well, but from a deeper position, then they're going to be center backs. And Hector Fort falls into that last category. As a center back prospect, his name didn't necessarily stand out from the rest. Center backs also take a bit longer to get there because of everything being asked of them both physically and game reading wise. So this is a good reason why we often don't hear about these amazing 13-year-old center back prodigies. And for good reason, you can relax on center backs, everybody. But while fourth the center back was a good prospect and not necessarily a great one, his move to right back this season has turned him quickly into an elite prospect for the club. Back in September, he became the fifth youngest UEFA Youth League debutante for Barca, just behind Yamal, Ilas Moriba, Ansu, and Balde. Well, actually that stood for a few weeks, but more on that later. And he did just kind of feature. He started at right back in five of the six games and wasn't included in the final match day after Barca had already won their group and qualified for the knockouts. In watching him, and maybe it's just a Spanish connection that's working my bias, his feeling does feel as high as Cesar Aspilicueta, and that's also due to his playing style. He can make an occasional run forward, but his crossing isn't necessarily a strong suit at the moment. Instead, he plays really accurate balls from that right side and would likely really excel as a right center back in the three-back system. He's about where you'd want a 16-year-old to be in the air. You can see that his body positioning and timing are already there to make pretty reasonable improvements. Like almost every top Barca prospect, he makes good decisions with the ball and is very comfortable in possession, reading the game well and using superior technique than the opponent to draw them in and pass around them. While I did mention that his crossing can improve, this is also likely because it's not his first idea. His control with the ball is good enough that he likes to use combinations in the middle of the field to push the ball forward, using those good decisions to not turn the ball over in dangerous spots. Looking at the timeline, he may time this whole thing perfectly. Even if Sergio Roberto renews for one more season and Barca bring in another right back next summer, two years from now when Fort is 18, I would expect there to be a pathway to minutes for him in the first team. But don't be surprised if you see him sooner. Because Xavi did make my job pretty easy by calling up those U19 players with a lot of potential, and especially at the attacking midfield and inverted winger spot where there are so many options, 17-year-old Daniel Rodriguez might be at the top of both Xavi's list and he's at the top of my list in that position in the academy too. He's only been at Barca for two seasons now, having joined the U16s in the fall of 2020 from Real Sociedad. Those early days at La Real earned him the David Silva comparisons, but let's pump the brakes on that due to his position at first team level being such a question. David Silva was an attacking midfielder who would set up as a high interior with La Real today as just a 10 really, protected by two deeper midfielders. Rodriguez though, who was shown his stuff with the U19s this season, as well as the Spain U17s and 18s and in the New for Youth League, has him playing as an inverted right winger and occasionally as an interior. His left foot is his special weapon. And obviously when he's on the wing, it's hard to stop him from getting inside on that left foot. He's not necessarily the best finisher, he's put some long range goals in, but that very well could improve. Same with his defensive positioning. But he is still 17, offensively, he takes on so much responsibility, sometimes just gotta let the kid cook. The physical tools are there on the wing or in the middle. His close control, his creative choices, and his ability to beat defenders off the dribble with pace. Those are all skills that should translate as defenders get better. What I really wonder though is where Xavi would see him even breaking in at first team level. 
He's probably best in the long run as an attacking midfielder in a 4-2-3-1. Last time I checked, that position doesn't exist in the Barca first team. So does Xavi teach him how to hug that touchline a bit more, or does he figure out how to improve his defensive positioning to fit him in as an interior? At 17 and having only been with Barca for two seasons, there is still a lot of time and hope that we get that answer. For now though, wherever he can make an impact with the youth teams is actually where you want him, improving his craft and refining things in the final third. Another player to arrive in the summer of 2020 was Victor Barbera, who plays with Barca Athletic and the U19s pretty much all over the academy. Previously of C, San Gabriel and CF Dom, both local Catalan sides around the city of Barcelona, that should be an indication that Barbara, yeah, he was born in Barcelona as a local boy. I was a little hesitant to put the 18-year-old Barbera on the list because I'm not really sure what his future at the club is. His contract is up in the summer, and we haven't heard much about movements on negotiations. And while I wouldn't generally be concerned with not hearing anything about a U19 and Barca Athletic player at this point, he has scored enough goals this season that other teams are definitely looking at him, including potentially PSG. They have been looking at him last season though too, having scored 23 goals for the U19s on the way to leading them to the league title. This season, it's more goals of the same, scoring 7 goals in 4 UEFA Youth League games, including that 16-minute hat-trick against Bayern Munich. The rest of his time has been spent playing between the U19s and Barca Athletic. He only has 2 goals for the U19s, but that's because he's been a regular for Rafa Marquez, playing in 13 games, almost 700 minutes, and scoring 4 goals, which leads the team by the way. Forward is such a tricky position to predict, obviously. When you have Robert Lewandowski and then so many other capable center forwards like Memphis and Ferran Torres fighting for a sniff of a minute, can you ever spare one for a teenager? Barca will have to answer that question in contract negotiations, or kool will have to watch Barbera's career progress from afar. As for what kind of player he is, it's kind of cliche, but he's a pretty complete forward. He finishes well, moves off the ball well to put himself in scoring positions, doesn't take too many touches with the ball, keeps it moving, drops in to free up space from the wingers, and is decent in the air. He scores in a lot of different ways too, and he's a willing presser. He's quickly turned himself into one of the elite center forwards at the youth level around the world. And like many players like him, his future is all about first team opportunities, and a yet unknown ability to do this against top flight competition. It is a good sign that he's still scoring against grown men in the third division with Barca Athletic, but the first team, well that's a different ball game. Before we get to the honorable mentions, this last final pick, well he's somebody that kind of forced my hand and put me in, as I said, a difficult spot because he continues to make history. In November, Pau Gabarsi at 15 became the third youngest UEFA Youth League debutante behind Jeskimal and Mariba, missing that second spot by just six days. As I said, having two 15-year-olds in this list is a bit weird, but as I've noted in the past, appearing for the club in UEFA Youth League, generally a competition reserved for 18 and 19-year-olds, does put you on the radar to get looked at by the first team. But I will quickly add the caveat that I did earlier about center backs. Things change at youth level, and they change quickly. For a few years, the name was Diego Almeida, a terrific ball playing center back with all the tools, but after two seasons where his defending hasn't really caught up to his high level offensive game, the 18 year old whose contract expires in June could leave the club at just 19. So again, especially for a position like center back, take heed and be patient. Gubarsi, who arrived from Girona in 2018 at the age of 11, is currently playing with the U18s, that's a Juvenil Bay, and he did get that one aforementioned start in the UEFA Youth League once the group was decided. What you do have to like about Gubarsi is that he looks the part of the modern center back. He's strong for his age, which sometimes serves to hold players back because they rely too much on their early physical tools. But his reading of the game and ball playing abilities are much more advanced than your average 15 year old right footed center back. Like I do usually try to do with these, he's the last of the five names because he's farthest from the first team at the moment. But as I always say, that is a name maybe not in the next year or two, but a name to commit to memory for use later. As you've heard me repeat a hundred times, this has been a really unorthodox update because unlike years ago when I started doing this, when the likes of Ricky Pooj and Alex Kayada were in their early 20s already and just pushing into the first team, the likes of, you have to give them credit, Kuman and Xavi and the club's financial woes, they have really changed the way that the club has had to look at their youngsters, their teenagers, and evaluate whether or not they're ready for the first team. And my honorable mentions still fit in that same mold. I've already highlighted Arnaud Casas and Ford on how Alacon in previous videos now both in the U19s and likely on the verge of some Barca athletic minutes in the spring, but we'll have to see. The update on Alicon is that after missing more than a year through injury, the now 18 year old has returned well, playing twice in the youth league, but more importantly, scoring 8 goals with 2 assists for the U19s, taking over for Victor Barbera at that level. And Xavi has also recently called him up to first team training. The Ferran Torres-esque forward is not the fastest winger, but he can play across the whole front line and uses really good runs off the ball and movement into the box to be a threat. Finishing up the U19, 17-year-old center back Martin Georgiev arrived from his native Bulgaria this summer and is doing well both in the Youth League and with Juvenil A. 
He did make some appearances last season for Slavia Sofia's first team, so it may be nice for him to play against teenagers again. I'm not comparing him to Rajo, but I will say that between Araujo and Kunde, he's an Araujo type of center back. His physical tools really stand out at youth level, and as I mentioned before, that can sometimes be a blessing and a curse for young players. His contract is up in the summer of 2024, so I wonder if a call up to Barca Athletic won't be in the cards next year. We'll have to see what former Barca center back, almost legend, Rafa Marquez thinks about him. Another name you heard me mention is 16-year-old Pau Prim, probably the most natural 4-3-3 pivot in the entire academy. He got his debut in the youth league in a final match day and has been doing his thing for the U18s this season. He's comfortable with both feet, he's tall, and reads the game well. With that position requiring so much positional maturity and high-level decision-making, I'd still wait about two more years of things going well for him to really consider his name. Because ahead of Prem as the defensive midfielder is Gerard Hernandez, who is a 17-year-old regular defensive midfielder for the U19s. Hernandez is one like Marc Casado. He's been in the academy since his pre-teen years and can't be unseated from an important spot in his teams, even though the club does bring in other players to compete with him. And with so many pivot options, it is curious to wonder if any of those will ever make the jump. Back to Juvenile Bay, alongside Prem in the midfield is Adrian Gill, who I mentioned previously over the summer, but I'll mention again. He was one of the six 16-year-olds named to the UEFA Youth League squad, but he didn't feature. I'm not concerned about that, though, due to the competition in the midfield. But what intrigues me is what kind of player he's going to develop as. His U18 center midfield mates in Wesley Dwal, Brian Farinas, and Cristo Munoz are all a bit more attacking than he is. But obviously at that level, Barca are regularly on the front foot, and you get to see plenty of what Gil can do moving forward. And I'm not just putting him on the list because he's an American playing for the U.S. youth teams. Barca doesn't really produce that many natural box-to-box midfielders, and Gil might have a future because of a profile you don't see very often. He just renewed with the club, so say that name as well. And don't get sucked at that box-to-box idea. Maybe he's an attacking midfielder. Maybe he sits deeper. He has a lot of potential either way. Our last piece of business today, I do want to put the name Nico Takahashi on the radar, but not for the reasons you'd expect. At 17 and playing with the U18s, Takahashi isn't like anybody else that I've mentioned. He's always generally played with his age bracket and is progressing at a reasonable pace. He arrived in 2019 from Cornea, and the left back did get named to the youth league roster, even if he didn't feature. But why I bring up Takahashi is that due to him being born in Cornea to a father from Argentina and a mother from Japan, he's going to be talked about and hyped up more and more as those countries, and especially those countries' supporters on social media, try to recruit him to play for one of those three teams. He's already received call-ups to the Spain U16s and the Japan U19s and U20s, and Argentina is still pushing for him too. Call me crazy, but all that international attention may actually take some of the stress off his day-to-day work at Barca. So that's the list. If there are names you think I missed or names that you think I should have covered, check that video from the summertime, because I likely did mention them, but they haven't really changed their stock too much in a few months since then. But more importantly, I hope you enjoyed the new year and time with family and friends. And if you got a little bit too much work to do or you're just by yourself this holiday season, I want to really thank you for being part of this Barca community, and I hope you found a home here as well. And because Barca do play again for the first time in two months, in a few days, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of those match reviews or anything like that, any of the additional contact with Barca actually playing. But most importantly, as always, Forza Barca!